Hi everybody, welcome to Beyond the Lines. My name is Sarah, I'm the artist band Pencil Geschichten and today on this final part of Column McKenzie I am adding details. So there is a lot of color pencil and uh, gel pens in the midground and the foreground and I'm talking to you about why I choose certain shading colors and uh, why it is sometimes a little better not to add too much um, on top of your uh, underpainting layers and it depends on what you want to achieve of course but for my personal taste here for my page uh, I talk to you about why I stop at a certain point. I hope you enjoy. There is a little um, music maybe again trouble like with last week. I hope I can uh, get rid of it in post-production and uh, keep fingers crossed that when I film the next video there won't be any disturbances. So take good care and enjoy. So let's hopefully get this page finished. I do have my Faber-Castell Polychromos colored pencils next to me to the right to the left. You can see it a bit here. And uh, I want to uh, do all the final shading and such, bring the midground and the foreground out. I'm uh, going to start with the midground, and most of my colors for shading are probably going to be brown, gray, purple, and uh, black and blue. Um, because that is for one the the color scheme that I already laid down and also I think these are just wonderful shading colors no matter what uh, color scheme you have used on your art piece and since I do have the underpainting of the markers I don't have to do too much so for example I started here with the um, with the candle holder and it just needs a tiny little bit of a shadow on the right hand side because the light is coming from the left. That's all. This is done. Ta-da! Part one down. So I'm going around the page and just adding loads and loads of color or shading color. Um, for example the next thing is my fireplace here so I'm taking a warm gray rather dark one and with a very light touch I just go over some of the parts where I think there should be a little bit of a shadow there so for example here the rest is lit <coughs> from the window there's gonna be darker things here because the light doesn't really hit everything and I'm just pretty much coloring uh, or shading on the right hand side of things so here's a complete shadow Just a little more here. It's gonna get even darker there but I have to bring in another color for that which I don't want to do now. I just want to uh, go all over the fireplace with my warm gray first. I'm gonna probably introduce either black or Payne's gray or a combination of all of that. I'm probably also introducing a little bit of indigo. So down here everything is darker because there's almost no light hitting directly but still I'm keeping a few things a little lighter just to have a little interest and uh, uh, well not losing the line work and the detail there but I don't have to put down too much pigment because I do have the underpainting and that actually <coughs> excuse me that actually makes for a very quick 
shading process because I don't have to go over one particular piece of paper again and again and again to uh, get rid of the white spots in the paper that come with the texture of the paper. So I can work fairly quickly, which I like a lot. So up here the light hits so I'm gonna have just a little of the warm gray come in here and again I'm having a super light touch I don't really need much colored pencil for the midground I will add I think quite a bit more on uh, the foreground so the focal point in, in this particular page, which is column. But here for the midground, I just need to pull it forwards on the page and um, add a little shading there. But I don't need to add too much for it to look interesting and fitting with the whole coloring page. Just a smidge to, well, pull it forward like I said. And just like last week, my lovely neighbors are still blasting loud music. It's uh, way quieter than it, than it was in the video before. So I hope that in post-production, I can get rid of any music, any noise in the background, because I don't want the bots to uh, detect the music and say, copyright infringement. So bear with me, I'm trying. So, need to even that out a little bit. And add a little more here those lines and uh, down here I also need to add a little more before I introduce new colors. Um, I think I'm just gonna go with plain black for the darkest spots, put it on top again very very light touch Just want to up the contrast a little bit. Same goes here on this side, upping the contrast by adding almost like a like a glow or a halo around column but not really because I'm gonna feather it out quite a bit for one and second I'm not adding black all around column's head just where the darkest spots are Go. A little smoothing out.
There we go. <clears throat> that would be enough for me for the fireplace. I don't want to pull it too close because that is um, what I'm going to do with him. Now <coughs> I'm going to color him last. I'm going to move on to the uh, chair and I'm using red violet to shade it a bit. And uh, pretty much there's only a little bit up here where you have light and around here and up here. Down here there's shadow. The light goes until this part pretty much. So I'm going to add a very tiny little a uh, soft layer of the red violet pretty much I'd say three quarters of the chair going in circles or ellipses because it gives me the smoothest result and again I'm having a super light hand so I'm hardly putting down any pigment it's just I, I just do that to uh, soften the shading process and softly um, adding that layer, just darkening it up here and there, just to pull it from the background into the midground. Lightly, lightly, lightly. Same goes for the chair so very lightly shading the lower part Pulling the color a little bit higher on the left hand side, uh, on the right hand side, because the window is a tiny little bit to the left on the page, so the highlight would cast from this. Also, here are books, so they cast a shadow, so I'm coloring a little bit underneath them. Mm, have to feather it out a tiny touch here on this part. The uh, line is a little too harsh for me. There we go. <clears throat> And I'm adding Payne's Gray underneath the book as an additional shading color. And I'm going to bring in, what's it called? Caput Mortum Violet for a few of the flower pattern parts here because I think they are embroidered on the upholstery.
not adding too much just a tiny little bit I think that gives enough of interest <clears throat> And I'm not gonna color over, over over all of those lines because I think there's parts where the embroidery is a little thicker. So uh, they used a little thicker thread or multiple strands of thread next to each other, but they didn't do it all over the place. So that is why I'm also not adding the uh, pencil here to the whole flower pattern just a little bit here and there Maybe a little up here and up here and also here. <clears throat> I think that brings out the pattern enough. And uh, now I'm going for where is it? Where's my favorite trading color? There it is, indigo. <clears throat> One for the book here. And I also need a beige tone or maybe, what is this? A brown ochre, I like that. And you see, I don't always keep or I don't always sharpen my pencils before I use them because for some things I find that a dull uh, pencil is a little easier or it just works better, especially, <clears throat> excuse me, when I have just a thing that I slightly want to shade and not too much. So I'm going over the brown book here with my indigo as well. Just makes for such a nice shading color. Having a bluer tint here on this book and even on this one here, just adding a tiny little bit. It's already enough. And the bookmark has to be shaded. And then I can move on with the wooden part of the chair. Again, I'm using indigo. And I'm gonna start my vlogging camera because I need a little bit of footage for my next vlog. And since my uh, talk o'clock videos are mainly about life in a studio. I think it's a good thing to have some footage of some artwork. At this point I need a little <clears throat> bit of a sharper tip. So I'm Ooh, gonna sharpen my pencil because there's very tiny little details here that I don't want to bluntly shade, just parts of it. Okay. 
there's that part. Can go on. To the lower part of the chair. Here I have to shade the middle and keep the outer rim of the chair legs <clears throat> lighter because the light hits it from the sides or from the back, better said, and there's less light here in this section. There doesn't pretty much hit any light. This one here, there's shadow on this part. And for this one here, <clears throat> it hits a little more from the top because the window is higher than this part of the chair. There's a tiny little bit of light also hitting from the floor, bounces off the floor and then hits the chair. Then I'm going to take a little bit of black for this particular part here because this is the darkest section. Since this uh, leg here uh, covers part of here and here and here on these other connectors, there's the darkest spot. So I'm going to darken it up. There we go. Uh, then I can move on to <clears throat> that table here. Another of my favorite shading colors is Walnut Brown, I think. No, sepia, dark sepia. It's a rather cool color. So I'm going to introduce that. not being very particular here because I think I can uh, convey that this is wood so there's like patterns in wood so I'm just gonna go with it especially here on the legs Going to oh I forgot one bit down here. Going to add a little bit of indigo. You know it's uh, quite the repetition in every video pretty much. But what can I say? These are my favorite shading colors. So of course I'm going to use them over and over and over again.
And <clears throat> I'm also going to add a little bit of Payne's Gray. Because light bounces off of things. I mean, in this part here, I just want to smooth things out. But light bounces off of things. And since I do have a gray floor and gray, gray walls, there's going to be a little gray tint to um, the legs of this table here. Uh, on to the bird cage. Now I need a nice yellow ish tone. So I'm taking what are you called? Uh, Naples, a uh, dark Naples ochre. That should work rather well, I hope, <coughs> for this birdie cage here. We are seeing the back of that rod here, so it's gonna get a little bit of the shading. This one here is gonna be the darkest section, goes a little lighter towards the top, and this one here. I'm going to add a little bit of a darker color in a minute. I want to have the uh, dark Naples put in first before <clears throat> I go on. And uh, what are you? Oh, yellow ochre, I think. I think that could be a little more subtle and therefore <coughs> make a better blend. So I'm adding, yeah, that's, that's more of what I wanted. So I'm going where the darkest spots are. Adding with a very light touch. I know my finger, my, my uh, pointy, pointing finger, my left hand looks like I'm really putting down pressure, but I'm not. I'm just trying to keep a good grip on my pencil. Okay, the birdie in there needs a little bit of shading too, but just a tiny, tiny bit, really not that much. And I'm having violet on here, so. Being quite careful. Oof with the amount of pencil that I put down. That's already enough. And uh, 
need a little bit of the dark brown I used for that piece of uh, wood that he sits on and also for the water bowl. Just a little more of the ochre. That is the birdcage. Now I can move on to the candle holder. I'm taking the dark naples again to add a tiny little bit of an orangey tint on the bottom of the flames. And then I need a very light gray. I'm taking cool gray number three being very soft and I'm just shading towards the left. Just really a tiny, 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 tiny little bit. Not too much because these are white candles and not gray ones. Then moving on to Payne's Gray. And I'm shading from the left again because uh, the daylight hits from the right. Shading a little bit. Giving it a little bit of interest. Just a bit of contrast, you know. Coolest shading color ever. Indigo makes this a little more interesting. Not putting that down everywhere, just here and there. Just a little bit. See, there it is. Uh, now I can move on to the wooden part of that candle holder and I'm staying with indigo. And I'm shading towards the left again since the light is hitting from the right. Now it's going to get a little tricky because I got a shade in between those metal rods here. There we go. <clears throat> and then I move on to the desk behind before I uh, color that birdcage up in front of the desk. There's going to be a little darker uh, towards this part of 
the desk because the light again comes from the right that actually rhymes right the light comes from the right so blending that out very softly And same goes for those parts here in between those metal things. I'm, I just thought while I was doing so, I should probably uh, use gel pen on those metal parts here. I think that would be a cool idea. Also, it would pull the cage forward a bit. So I'm going to do that. I'm only going to work on the parts of the cage that I already colored plus the bird. Um, and do the rest of the cage as the final bit. Because if you are with me on this channel for a while now, for a while now, for one, thank you. Second, um... I do gel pen work as the final bit. Glitter and gel pen are always the last bit that I'm working on on a page. And it's not going to be any different today. So I'm going to work on the page here first, adding a bit. <coughs> Sorry. Of the darker brown. I'm also going to introduce indigo and gray to this particular disc, but more on the left hand side of it, not so much on the right hand side. Um, let's start with gray. And for the bird, I think, uh, let's go for the uh, wood first. Because I might want to, I think I want to add a different kind of a color to this birdie than the other two. The other two are purple, so I think I don't want to go there. <coughs> Maybe like, like a light olive green. Could be something. Hmm. Yeah, I think so. So I'm taking a light green. I'm gonna sharpen my pencil and I will probably add a little bit of a greenish gold. And there's music again, and I'm probably gonna have to add my own music, not me talking to this part of the video. I'm very sorry, but this is the only way, uh, the only day I can film uh, in about 
two weeks time frame so I have to keep filming today adding a little bit of that greenish uh, golden green I think the color is adding a bit of that and a little more of the green I think that's pretty nice. Uh, I'm also going to add a dark green because I want to have a little bit of color repetition for the vest. So I'm just gonna put it here. Oh, I forgot to color the books and the apples. That's not how it goes. So let's remedy that. Midground, almost background. little bit of the uh, ochre that I used on uh, the other books and I'm taking what are you no nope, you're black I don't want you I want blue adding a tiny bit here <clears throat> and a smidge of Payne's Grey And then I can move on to the dark Naples yellow for this bird cage here, like the parts that I already colored. I'm not talking about uncolored parts, so I'm adding quite a bit here. And I'm also adding a little bit of the brown ochre to darken things up even more Sorry, my tummy is gurgling. I hope this is not on camera or on audio, I should say. So then I'm going in with my brown ochre. Adding the darkest parts. onto these parts here and I can go over those metal rods here because I'm going to use gel pen I can layer gel pen on top a little darker here on the bottom and towards the left. Same here, same here. And I do the same on the lower ring.
and also with the ooh, light yellow ochre. And finally, I only need to have this golden shape. I don't know what that's supposed to be. Maybe, I'm sorry for my tummy, but uh, I had cake. So there's uh, gluten and lactose in there and I'm not doing well with either of them. But you know, a birthday cake is a birthday cake, so I had to eat a tiny little piece of cake this morning because it's the kid's birthday. And now I'm <laughs> paying for it. Okay, <clears throat> I think that is enough for the birdcage. It's actually, well, it's, uh, it didn't take too long, right? And uh, now I will shade the floor. And then I said earlier, the final bit will be Mr. Colin McKenzie. So where's my paints gray? There it is. So there's, I'm going to add a little bit of detail here where the floor meets the wall just to have these two separated. I'm also going to pull in the shadow a tiny bit because there's no direct sunlight underneath the window frame. There we go. And then I'm going to pull in the shadow from the opposite side. And pull it as far as I need it. So for example here there's way more than towards the back of the window. So here's like full full sunlight. There's a little bit of a shadow here underneath the table. <clears throat> and uh, back here there is shadow I'm, I'm using still, I'm using the lightest touch too. Uh, and there's music and I have to stop talking because I gotta cut that audio. Seems they stopped with the music. Unbelievable. No, they did not. So I gotta cut again. I'm, I'm sorry if I can't um get rid of that music in post production i have to cut things and i cannot or i have trouble with explaining i'm just going to talk and hope that i can keep the audio uh, this is really it's annoying guys but I'm not gonna focus on it. I'm gonna focus on my colorings and what indigo can do to my grays without the shadows looking too flat. 
Okay, let's try again. Um, music is quiet before my audio equipment dies because the battery is really low. All I gotta do is um, add a little detail to Mr. Column before I go in with, um, um, what's it called? Ha ha ha, words. Uh, gel pen that was the word so I'm taking my light gray and adding a bit here and there not too much though because he really has to have light gray hair and then I'm going over the portions with paints gray amping up the contrast Since I went in with Paints Gray first on the lower part, I'm going to blend it out with my light cold gray. And then just as before, I'm using a very light touch. I think it works a little better for me to have the paints gray down first and then blend it out with a lighter gray. But depending on uh, your preference, you could of course also go the other way around. But for me, I think this is the way to go. Being a little lighter here on the left hand side of him, because the light hits the uh, hair not really that much but I think enough since he has very light gray hair some light will bounce off of it vlogging camera and get a little more footage sorry if it casts a shadow I try to move out of it so I'm just going over the portions where I put down the Payne's gray pencil which makes for a natural highlight where only the light gray marker is. There's a single hair that has to be colored. There we go. Blending this out, blending, blending, blending. It's a thing that really works well with the polychromos. You can layer wonderfully and therefore blend colors together nicely. <clears throat> Gotta move my camera again. This is in the way. So I'm doing the same thing with his beard and also with the eyebrows. I'm gonna color them in. It's 
not a lot that you gotta add necessarily it's just I think the key is to putting down the color so the pigment uh, the details and such in the right spot then you can get away with very little work but it does the trick it uh, makes for great contrast so <clears throat> eyebrows Also blending these out with a light gray. Oh, maybe even a little lighter. And then I'm throwing away my <coughs> pencil. So for the pupils, I'm going in with a black pencil. And then I need my indigo, but I gotta resharpen my pencil because I do have a very small surface that I need to color and I just wanna color the upper part of the eyes not the lower parts there we go now i can move on to the skin <coughs> excuse me and i'm using what was that brown called that i already used brown ochre I'm gonna use that shade a bit especially here around the nose and on his wrinkles It feels weird to go around the eyes and really have the wrinkles be so pronounced. I don't know why, but I think when you start drawing people, you probably go for younger folks and uh, they don't have as many wrinkles. So it feels weird maybe to then draw or color an older person where you want to emphasize the wrinkles actually. So um, might be a, a little bit of time until you're getting used to that, but you're gonna get there, don't worry. And I actually find it quite interesting to draw, old <coughs> excuse me, to draw older people because I think uh, the wrinkles are um, what makes a face really interesting in older people. It's not so much the eye color or the eyelashes or the cute little button nose anymore. It's, uh, I think it's the wrinkles. Shading the face. And I shade it more on the right hand side because the light is coming from the left. So there's a little more shadow on this part. Going for the lips, going for the same color. I think just makes him look a little more natural. Uh, I will add the highlights in the eyes later on. Now for the hands, 
same thing using the same pencil shading 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 and shading a little darker towards the right hand side they are all in shadow because his body blocks any major light from getting there but i don't want to color them like flat in one color and not have, have any contrast so i'm keeping the opportunity of a second light source which i think is the way that he looks there's claire and then there's a door and through the door there's some light coming into the room so that is why i think there's a little highlight there uh, that's artistic license pretty much um, uh, you sometimes just need to have a little more contrast though with a coloring page it's not indicated where it goes or where another light source might be so just make your own up and um, well shade accordingly I think that's uh, what works really well at least it does for me maybe it does for you as well it uh, it might also work with um, having a little imagination and extending the scene that you're coloring off screen or out of frame keeping the um, scenery going so these are the hands now I need my um, what's it called light yellow ochre because I want to shade the uh, shirt with it I think that works rather well as a shading color I will probably maybe introduce the raw sienna or what it's called no, no it's what's it called green gold Maybe I'm gonna introduce that or a bit of the uh, brown ochre. But for now, I just <clears throat> wanna start with the yellow ochre. I don't think it's gonna be brown ochre. But I'm going to add here where there are the darkest spots where the knot is tight or the bow underneath the chin. I think that works rather well. So I'm just going to use that color. And that's the thing that I mean when I say color repetition, guys. Use your pencils or your colors. It doesn't matter if it's pencils, but use your colors again and again all over your piece of art. Will make it look more cohesive. And even if you mix colors together, say you're working with watercolors and you're using a blue and a uh, yellow to mix a green if you had used that exact same blue standalone on another part of your um, painting it will work the brain does recognize that and finds th that or or it makes a a uh, piece of art look very calm very well put together very balanced just because of using colors over and over again that doesn't mean that you should only use colors with repetition there is some that have to stand out and not be repeated see the red book here or that green bird because you need to have um, focal points or um, spots that stand out while your eye as the viewer uh, wanders around the artwork gotta be caught off guard once in a while and find something interesting so 
same on this side here. Going on top with my brown ochre. Almost there. There we go. And I'm going to use that same yellow ochre color for the buttons here. Just adding a little bit on top towards the right hand side. And then I can go on with the jacket and for that I thought I had a brown yep yeah, there it is um, the dark sepia so I'm just adding a little bit there I don't have to add too much I think just a little bit of shading and bringing back detail from the line work Shading the jacket a bit behind his arms. Arm, singular, not plural. <clears throat> so on top of here, underneath that collar or whatever that is. Now the sleeve itself. Letting some of the line work stand out again. So just going over the line work. And then I'm shading towards, <coughs> excuse me the lower right with a very, very light touch. Very, very light. Same here underneath the pocket. So going for the details first and then shading very lightly. On to the other side. First the line work. And then slightly very very lightly going over the jacket and shading that color with a really light touch to not get rid of the details that I just drew in or colored in made visible again Thank you. 
since that jacket is pretty much lit from this side. I'm just going to shade around the buttons here towards the right hand side. And uh, I'm going to enhance the line work that was given to me by the illustrator. Now I'm going to shade very lightly again the arm casts a shadow onto that part of the jacket. So I'm very lightly bringing that in. There's even more shadow down here because the arm and the body are casting a shadow. <clears throat> And onto the sleeve, going for the line work, line work, line work, line work, even more. And then shading towards the right hand side because the, uh, the light comes from the left. Again, using the lightest touch I can master. Just want a little bit of a shadow there, not too much. Moving on to that part of the sleeve. Now I need to shade this side a little more because I have this in the shadow. Have to move my paper a bit because I have a little bit of a glare with my filming lights on top, uh, like where I put the polychromos because they're oil based. So. They um, <clears throat> they have a they <laughs> them and my filming lights together. They make a little bit of a glare on my paper from the angle that I'm sitting in. So. Softly blending out my shadow here. Last little part of the coat. Now I'm moving on to the belt and the pants because I can use the same the same uh, brown pencil. Assuming that there is a light source across ooh, nope, that was nothing. Uh, across from column. Gotta erase that. was a little too much or too far I should say. Um, assuming that there's a light force across uh, a light force mm -hmm, a light source across from column I'm uh, putting a little bit of a highlight here on his belt 
And I'm adding a little bit of a dark, uh, no, the light yellow ochre. Just a tiny little bit. And a little, little bit of the green gold. There we go. <clears throat> I think I'm also gonna add a little of the green gold to his buttons. Just think it uh, completes the look a little better. Um, On to the pants. Going for the line work first. Emphasizing those wrinkles that are drawn in because they have to be visible afterwards. And then I <clears throat> and then I will add shading, which is top down with a very light touch. A little more shading towards the jacket and the vest. Because I don't want this to look too flat, I'm adding a tiny little bit of indigo as well. Just for the shading though, not for bringing back the line work of the artist, of the illustrator who made this page. Is it called? No, it's dark Naples ochre. Need that for the book page here. Just adding a smidge, not too much. Um, and then I'm going in with my uh, brown ochre. Adding a little bit more. Then I need a very dark red. Let's see, what do we have? Dark red. Let's see if that even shows up on top of the... Mm, not really, just a bit. So I could use it for blending out, which means I'm using the Caput <laughs> Mortuum Violet to shade. I'm going in with a medium heavy hand because I want the uh, brownish violet color to actually be visible. And I'm also going to use a little bit of the indigo. around his hand because it casts a little bit of a shadow I think. Not too much though. Then I can blend that out a little bit with my 
dark red. That's more like it. Mm. Now I only need to color the vest and then I can go on to the gel pens already. So I'm using indigo to shade because this is a fairly dark green and I think for one I don't have a green that would be visible enough on this uh, marker color. Also I really really like to shade green with blue so of course I'm going for my beloved indigo. First I enhance the line work that was given to me by the illustrator. And after that I'm just simply very lightly shading in uh, like the dark blue on top of the green. Very, very light touch. Yes, and I know I'm going fairly fast because I want to end this uh, coloring on today's video. You should, however, take your time and um, work on your shading and on your coloring in general in your own pace. Don't feel rushed just because you see somebody coloring maybe a little quicker than you usually do. Last little bit. And then I'm quickly gonna get my gel pins. I don't think, no, I don't have them with me. Last final check. Yep, that's good. And I'm gonna be back in a magic editing second. Here we go. Let me choose. Um, I think I do have a white, yeah, a white one in the desk. So I'm going right to left now, not to smudge anything. There's my paper, there it is. So I'm going to give him a little bit of a highlight. And then I need a silver. Oops. Um, where do I want silver? No, I think I want a little bit of a brass or gold copper kind of a thing. I think it's brass for those buttons here. Because I think it fits just better with his overall color scheme. So there's quite a bit of yellow and brown on him. So I think that fits better. Mm, come on, please pull, 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 yeah.
that was the last button for him, yes. Now, <clears throat> I gotta go on to that cage. I think I want... Do I want this one? Or maybe a silver? A silver might get lost though, so I'm going for this darker um, shade. It's more like a, I don't know, blackish. <laughs> I don't know what that color is supposed to be. The, the pen looks like it's more of a dark gray, but if you look at the color here while I'm putting it down, it's more like a black. Now I really have to concentrate on where I have to put down the gel pen, so I might not talk as much. my brain only seems to be able to handle one thing at a time. My also might or very likely will have my big old head in the way because at this angle, or if I look straight down, I can't really see if I have good coverage of my gel pen. So I got to look from the side, which that which then means that my big old head is in. Frame. Sorry about that. Almost there for the upper part. This is quite exhausting on my arm because I really have to keep my hands steady. So <laughs> this is something that I did not anticipate. But well, I'm still gonna keep going. My muscles can relax later because I think this is the last video that I'm going to record for today. Not all that sure yet. 
maybe I'm gonna record one more video but I will at least have a big break in between If you have a lot of the polychromos on your paper, it could get a little tricky to go on top with the gel pen, but you just have to be patient and then you can manage. <clears throat> to the middle part I think this glitter sparkly part of this dark pencil, uh, not pencil, gel pen actually helps a little bit to not make this part of the coloring page look too dull. Because if I would have just taken a black or a dark gray marker, um, I think it could have lost a bit of Oomph, as they say. Um, I think with that tiny little bit of glitter or sparkle, whatever you want to call it, it uh, is pushed a bit into the foreground and adds a different kind of interest to the page. For the final little bit and my tummy is still annoying me just like earlier this video and in the, in the last video so sorry guys if this is on audio again hmm. shouldn't eat a few things So I'm drawing in those final lines that were not printed. I think that is enough for the cage. Yeah, I think so. So let me have a final check if this is my page done or if I need to Actually, I think I want to add a little bit of sparkle to his belt buckle. So I'm taking a wink of Stella in gold. Just 
just adding a tiny little bit of glitter because this is metal and it's supposed to look fancy. Just a tiny bit, doesn't have to be much. Whoop! But I should be able to close my pen. Ah, God in heaven. So, this is, I think, my page. Let me do a final, final check that I got everything that I wanted to have colored in. Yes, I did. So, here is the final page. I hope you enjoyed watching along next week. I'm gonna change up media because I already know what I wanna do for this one and I haven't done it in a while. I have done it in the background of uh, some of, uh, of one page or two pages in this book, but I haven't done it uh, with a lot of things so and now that I'm looking at it I'm thinking oh, maybe I'm not gonna do it so I don't know yet I will talk to you next week you will find out and I will as well if I'm going for the plan that I actually thought that I'm gonna do or if I'm moving that to another page I I don't know maybe the one after that um, I'm gonna have a few days to decide. I hope you enjoyed watching along. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Please remember that the blog post is up by now with all the pencils and pens, everything that I use. So if you like a certain color combo, you can just read up on it on my blog. Uh, the links are all in the description box below. Um, you can connect with me on any of those social medias. I would love that. And uh, thanks very much for watching. Take good care, have fun and enjoy your day. Bye.